Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Today's video we're going to go over some seeding schedules for the winter time, setting up my betel buckets for my plants, an issue I had with lighting, and another issue I had with my pepper plants. So I got my winter pepper production going here. They weren't doing super good, so Doug went through and trimmed off all of the branches and just got two or three main lines going up. And now the peppers are so much bigger and doing really good. But then we noticed we had some curling leaves here. So I wasn't sure what was going on. I was like, you know, they're not really yellow. They just look kind of funky. So I talked to Nathan from Crop King, and he says, I bet you have aphids. They make the, the uh, leaves curl up. And sure enough, there were some aphids in here. So I got some handy-dandy insecticidal soap, got rid of these guys, and now the tops and the new growth is doing wonderful. So it's something new we learned. If you see curled leaves on your uh, pepper plants, look for aphids. So I wanted to show you what I'm planning for this winter time, you know, my betel bucket production area here. This area right here, this line is going to be all my tomato plants. I'm just going to do one row of tomato plants this year. And the reason I choose this area for the tomatoes is because it's easier to go up and down each side to harvest the tomatoes because they do get so big. And then when Doug has to lean and lower, he's got more room. And then this line over here, I already have some peppers started. So I'm going to continue with all the other peppers I have. And of course, I got that one already in peppers. And then over here against the plastic, this is where I'm going to put my cucumber uh, um, plants and all of that here because it's going to be easier to harvest them because you don't really have to go on both sides to get to the um, fruit of the plant. So I just wanted to show you what our plans were for this winter. So I wanted to show you here my pepper plants, my tomato plants, and my cucumber plants I started for my winter production here. We were lent an LED light and I thought, oh, this is going to be great, a brand new light. The plants will do wonderful. Well, I put them underneath there and I kept watching them and they were doing terrible. You can still see some of the damage here on the tomato plants. Everybody was yellow, they were stunted in growth and they weren't doing good at all. So I took them out of there, put them up here on this cart and underneath our next lights that we have here uh, for our betel bucket production area here and they've turned around and are doing so much better. So I'm getting all the betel buckets clean here. I have an order in for uh, Crop King for my perlite and vermiculite, you know, how I like to layer that. So I'll do a video on showing how I get the betel buckets all set up here and get everything planted. So I decided to plant some microgreens and I have a channel here that I haven't used for a while because the admitter hose got cut off and was too short. So I decided I might as well do the microgreens here. So Doug is going to put a reducer on here for me and then extend it out so I can get my microgreens planted. So I'm going to get the channel ready here for the uh, microgreens. So I'm going to take the lids off and set them aside for a few minutes. So the first thing I want to do is roll out my growing medium here, my substrate. Cut it to length. Don't have very sharp scissors here. Then the next thing I'm doing is wet, get this all wet down. Okay, so getting this all wet here, using my nutrient water. And when you do get the water going, you're going to want to hold the substrate because it will like to go down towards the end of the channel. Now make sure it's thoroughly soaked. What I'm planting today, I'm doing one tray and I'm going to do half a tray in uh, micro broccoli and the other half in the pea shoots. So I'm going to do the back half over here with the micro broccoli. They're very small seeds, so I can't hand seed them. So I am going to use my little seeder I have. This makes it easier. Kind of fill it up. And just kind of shake the seeds on your wet growing medium. Don't want to do it too thin or too thick. If you do it too thick, they don't sprout well. I'm 
Okay, do just a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to do the pea shoots on this little bit bigger end. And the reason I picked these two varieties to go together because they will be ready at the same time. They're ready between seven and 10 days. So I will be able to harvest the whole tray at the same time. And once I harvest these, they will last at least two weeks in the refrigerator. A lot bigger seed here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gently going to put it back into place. And get my emitter here. And it should start flowing in a minute here once it gets pressurized. And I use a little clip here. And the reason why you want to do a reducer on here, because if you do this emitter full force, it'll wash all your seeds right down the channel. Whoops forgot one thing the main thing is when you seed them is you want to cover them up with the lids for a couple days till they germinate otherwise you'll get a ton of algae in there so I just gently set the lids on there we go Now I'll put the emitter back on. Okay, check them in a couple days and they should be sprouted. So my plan is to do a section in the back there and do about 10 to 12 trays so I can keep a rotation going of all the different microgreens so we have a good supply all winter because there's nothing better than fresh microgreens on your different dishes. Well, I hope you guys liked today's video. Like always, leave me questions, comments, or suggestions down below, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.